Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley, founder of BreakpointTrades.com. Earlier today, I posted my extensive detailed newsletter on the precious metals, the major breakout there in silver. Silver was up 10% last week. Gold, precious metals, and of course, commodities. So hopefully you've listened or watched that. And if you haven't done so, please do so. This is newsletter number two. So this newsletter is on the general market indexes sectors, indicators. Normally on the weekend, I'll cover everything in one big video, but this time I separated it into two. And again, this is Matthew Fraley, founder of BreakpointTrades.com. I founded it in 2003, 21 years ago, to provide advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and advanced mechanical trading algorithm systems, which we share the trade signals with our subscribers. They've been doing absolutely amazing. We had some recent mean reversion system trades. We also have, of course, our famous KISS systems. Again, let's go and get back to this video at hand, newsletter number two. I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. The, this is our backend recorder for our standard web page format. I'm gonna get this started now. Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with breakpointtrades.com. Hope everyone's had a nice weekend so far. This is newsletter number two for today. Earlier today, I sent out my detailed newsletter video on the precious metals, gold, silver, commodities. And this weekend, I separated the newsletters into two separate newsletters. So this one here focuses primarily on the general market indexes. We'll look at bonds and indicators. We'll look at some of the sectors. We'll look at a few commodities here. But again, most of this has been covered in that commodity newsletter. Hopefully, you watch that. If you haven't, Please do so. I'll also cover some recent trade ideas. I didn't run any scans for new ones. I may do that later. And again, as far as the market here, last Thursday, we had a shot across the bow where the market sold off very strongly, but then we had a nice rally on Friday. So on Friday, the S&P gained 1.1%, NASDAQ one and a quarter percent, Dow 0.8%. However, for the week, the major indexes were still down. 1% for the S&P, 0.8% for the NASDAQ. Both the Dow Jones and the Russell were down over 2%, 2.3 and 2.8% respectively, okay? Again, as far as the market, like I said, we've been expecting a correction here sometime in April. Um, it's possible we had a high end last week. It's still too early to say. The onus is on the bulls here short term to take back a couple of the lower highs that have been put in place since last Wednesday. Okay. You know, if we, again, if we do go on to make new highs, you know, we still are expecting a correction sometime this month or, you know, if it held on long enough, maybe even May, you know, the typical sell in May and go away. But, you know, I, we are seeing signs as far as like the small caps, IWM have a basically a textbook rising wedge, et cetera. Okay. And again, big moves lately in the precious metal space. Silver, a couple weeks ago, I put out a video saying silver is going to have a substantial move. And last week, it rallied 10%. Long term, that may be on the cusp of a major longer term move. I think it's a great swing trade. Inflation is a real problem, guys. Okay. For example, just look at this McDonald's slide here. And let me pull up a bigger version. And I don't know who this is from. You know, so I'm not sure. I would put a link here or to the source but this was sent to me, so I don't know. But again, this is with McDonald's. McChicken back in 2014 was a dollar. I remember that, it's now three bucks. Medium fries, basically more than doubled. Quarter pounder meal. Remember back when value meals used to be, shoot, I remember when they were 3.99 back in the 90s. 3.99, 4.99. Anyway, value meal, 5.39 for a quarter pounder meal. That's with fries and drink. Now 12 bucks. You know, at this stage, why wouldn't you just go to a bar, you know, or Texas Roadhouse or something like that where you can have a burger for the same price and it's much better quality, bigger, et cetera. Anyway, again, inflation's a real problem here. And as you know, during the last FOMC meeting, the market rallied strongly because the Fed hinted that they were targeting three rate cuts this year. However, I still think that the Fed may have to walk some of that back. In fact, Fed Governor Kashkari last week uh, 
said that he sees possibilities of no rate cuts in 2024. Think about that. So I provided a link here, a little short-term uh, video on Bloomberg you could watch. So really, guys, I mean, wouldn't be surprised. Just inflation is a real problem. You all know it. You've been to the grocery store, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot, and, you know, seen paint double the price it was 10 years ago. And it's just crazy. Anyway. Uh, big key news items this week are really Wednesday and Thursday. We have the CPI for PPI um, on Wednesday, along with crude inventories, FOMC minutes on Thursday, initial jobless claims, um, PPI, core PPI. So this should say core CPI here. Let me type it. Anyway, so inflation data next week, that's going to move the markets. It's going to move the dollar. It's going to move rates and you know, possibly the precious metals area, which have had a big move. Next. Uh, going on to the general market. So here's two images of the NASDAQ and actually there's two NASDAQ 100 features. So I just took another image. So here is a couple things I'm watching. These are ES futures, S&P 500 futures and NASDAQ 100 futures, both the uh, June contract. Anyway, you can see, you know, we had that big sell off on Thursday. We bounced back nicely on Friday. You can see we bounced off supply zone on the, S on the ES futures. We bounced off a little support on the NASDAQ. But if you look here, again, the onus is still on the bulls here very short term because we have supply zones, we have lower highs. So for the bulls, you really need to see. You know, they need to get back above the, these downtrend lines. Otherwise, it could easily, you know, if it goes up a little bit, it could stall in these supply zones and come down. All right. So that's what I'll be watching, you know, first thing Monday, basically, and even overnight on the futures. And let's move on. Sorry about this, guys. I'm an issue with my mouse. Next, image number two. This image shows you two charts of, first off, they're four hour charts of S&P 500 ES futures and NASDAQ 100 NQ futures. So as you know, we sold off late last week, especially on Thursday. We bounced strongly on Friday. But guys, even though Friday's bounce was pretty nice, you could see how ES bounced off a demand zone. Uh, the NASDAQ futures bounced off a support. But notice, you still have a series of lower highs in place here, right? So let's see. You know, until so you have a series of lower highs in place and you got a supply zone up here. So the point I'm making here is that, yes, Friday was a good rally, but the onus is on the bulls here because price could stall still here and go back down in this kind of wedge pattern. Same for the NASDAQ. What the bulls need is a follow-through rally and break over the downtrend line, take out the recent lower high. So again, short term, the bull onus is still on the bulls. And this is what I'll be monitoring tonight with futures and, of course, on Monday morning. I want to clear that out. Next. Talk about our mean reversion systems. We have 21 mean reversion systems, as you know. And this year, they've been fairly inactive because the market has been in such a strong uptrend since October of last year. But recently, we've had some of these trigger. We had recently on the short side, the exhaustion short number two triggered. And it gave a nice uh, winning trade last week. It closed out. We also had a couple mean reversion longs kick in, so let's cover those. So image number four here, this shows you some of these mean reversion systems that triggered. So here, first off, the upper left shows you the exhaustion short is actually exhaustion short number two. We have, there there's exhaustion short one and two. Same system, but slightly different settings. It triggered on the S&P over a week ago. It closed out on Friday for a very nice winning trade. That said, we had a couple of these mean reversion long systems trigger. The trend 
pullback on ES futures and on SPY. Uh, so far, these trades are up. I'm hoping we get a little bit of follow through on Monday so that these can close out. And I may elect to take part of these off anyway, just depending on what the market does. Next. Image number five, here's the trade statistics to that SPY short to uh, exhaustion short number two. So, so far it means it's, it keeps its 100% winning trades, albeit it doesn't trigger very often. Since 1995, there's only been 10 trades. So it's a very rare condition to occur. Again, all 100% winners. So you can see the trade average time in trades about seven days. And that was about how long this open exhaustion short was in place. Congrats if you took it, nice trade. Next. Back to the general market analysis. So image number six shows the index se sector table what transpired last week and on Friday. So again, as you know, for the week, the indexes ended up uh, down quite strongly, especially the Russell down 2.8%, the Dow Jones down 2.3%. They both lost some big, well, the Dow especially lost a big support area, which I'll show in a minute. S&P down about 1%, NASDAQ down 0.8%. Again, nice rally back on Friday, but as I just showed you above, we still have some lower highs in place. So it's definitely not confirmed we're gonna go back to the highs. In fact, we could have a high in place. As far as the 21 market sectors, all of them were up on Friday, except for utilities. Pretty nice moves here. The majority were down for the week. Quite nice sell-offs in some of these. Retail down five and a half percent. That appears to be the largest one. Uh, consumer staples, discretionary. Let's see, real estate, home builders down over 3%. Now, what remains strong? Some of these commodity areas. XLE, energy ETF, OIH, oil services, up 3.9% respectively for both of them. And communication services, that's some of the big tech like Google and Amazon and Meta. So they're continuing to hold up. If that area starts to unwind, then we could have some issues. And of course, metals and mining, you know, we've seen the big move in commodities and precious metals. Currency-wise, US dollar down 0.1% for the week. Not much change. Cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin down last week. Right now it's on a coil pattern, which I'll, I showed in the commodity newsletter. As far as the commodities here, again, mostly to the upside here. Only thing that wasn't up was corn and sugar, but everything else up. Look at that gain in coffee. Up. 12 and a half percent. It's a big move. 5.7 percent in copper, 4.5 percent in crude oil. You know, inflation is an issue, guys. Gold up four and a half percent. Silver up 10 percent last week. GDX, the miners, up seven percent. And the 10 year, 30 year treasury yields were up. Next. Item number seven shows you the economic news calendar. As I stated, the big news items this week are Wednesday and Thursday. You have the CPI, core PPI on Wednesday, along with the FOMC minutes. We also have some oil inventories. Remember, oil has been strong lately. And then on uh, Thursday, you have the, inf the producer inflation data, the PPI, core PPI data. And we'll see how that comes in. And of course, initial jobless claims. All right, let's jump to the index charts. First chart below, item number eight, is the weekly snapshot of the five key major indexes. As you know, I've been talking about these indexes holding their nine-week EMA on all these indexes. Now, the Dow here is leaking oil. It's closed right on it or a few pennies below it, looking a little more vulnerable. The S&P, the NASDAQ, they're all still holding their nine EMAs for now. Next. Chart number nine, here's the Dow Jones. Nice pullback again. Just a slight close below that nine week EMA. If the market does have a correction here, you can see the RSI divergence. I, I would look for a pullback back to test this previous breakpoint right around the 37,000 area. Next, Jabber 10, here's the daily chart of the Dow. You can see, that's why I said the Dow has been leaking oil. It stalled at the upper portion of this channel a couple weeks ago. Possible little double top there. And last week, that sell-off on Thursday strongly broke that uptrend channel. Now, we regained a little bit on Friday, but you see we closed well below the channel, right around that 50-day moving average. You have pretty pronounced MACD divergence here. So, you know, the onus is on the bulls here. This broken trend line of the channel is now 
resistance. Next, moving on to the S&P 500 charts. Here's chart number 11, the S&P daily. So again, you can see, you know, we had a big sell off last Thursday. We recovered, you know, a little bit, half of that down move on Friday. So again, could we still go back to the highs? Yes. Onus is on the bulls and take out the last lower high. You know, little warnings here on the RSI trend line breaks. This one's trying to recover it a little bit. You have you know, this MACD divergence that's been building. So again, let's see what happens early this week. Next. Chart number 12, here's the daily KISS system for the S&P. You know, so far it's been holding this ATR all the way up. The KISS system went long back here on October 31st. Smart trailing stop is still remains at 50.82. So regardless of what happens in the market, if we get a correction, this trade will be nicely profitable. Next, image number 13, here's the four time frames. The daily up here, we're still holding that ATR. As you can see, we bounced off of that essentially on Thursday. We're slightly below the ATR on the half day. Got a little sell cycle on the 130 minute. You know, so a little bit, let's see, a little choppy action here. Let's see what happens early this week. Next, chart number 14, here's the half day chart. This channel we've been showing, you can see we broke that channel on Thursday, bounced back on Friday, but we're kind of back testing the channel. So let's see what happens here. Do we, you know, again, the bulls need to come back up, take out that last lower high around 52.50. Needs to really get over 52.50. Otherwise, we are at resistance here. We could easily just go down again. You can see there's a big open gap down here. When the market does finally have a nice correction, guys, I am looking for perhaps a 10 to 12% pullback in the market. Okay. Next. Number 15, here's a two hour chart. Steve showed this last Thursday. It's a nice educational chart. First off, there's some unfilled gaps back here, which could be magnets on the next good sell off. Those open gaps are always filled almost. So those are always good magnets on the indexes. You can see here these supply zones. One thing we employ here at Breakpoint Trades is supply and demand zones. It's really powerful, really simple. So instead of just drawing a simple horizontal trend line for support and resistance, it's generally a zone. And um, you can see the supply zone. We pointed this out in late February, late March. We started the first supply zone here. And then lo and behold, we, we rallied back to the supply zone mid last week, and that's where price failed. You can see again, onus is on the bulls here. It really has to get back above these levels. Otherwise, we could have a little high in place. Next, Jarber 16, here's a two hour view. This shows you a potential bearish count where we have a little head and shoulder here. That bounce up was a wave two or B and we're gonna have a move down in C. If it's just a C, then we could recover again or if it's a bigger top, then you can go down in a five wave line. Onus is on the bulls earlier this week. Next, Charber 17, here's a 60 minute view. And we have that sort of like triple top. We retested that last Wednesday before selling off there on Thursday. Next, Charber 18, here's the NASDAQ KISS system. Again, no changes. Smart trailing stop still remains at 427.70. And of course, the ATR support there. System went long back here. It's an awesome trade so far. Congrats if you've been following those KISS systems. Here's the four time frames. On the Qs, the cycle, we have this end of bull cycle up here, which so far has been capping price. We're still holding the ATR. We're below the ATR on a half day. Sideways action on these smaller time frames. Next. Chapter 20, here's the triple Qs daily chart. Again, we basically sold off to the 50 day moving average on. Thursday where we bounced. You almost always haven't tested this 50 day moving average in many months. So it's always first initial support, which has proved to be the case. Now we'll see if we have a little high in place or can we recover. As far as symmetry, and I forgot to mention that for the S&P, the largest pullback in the uptrend on the Qs have been 17.6 points. So you need to pull back off the highs larger than that to break symmetry. So you need to pull back. You need price to go up below this 431.70. On the S&P 500, the symmetry is 130 points. So you need a pullback larger than 130 points on the S&P from the highs to break that up some uptrend symmetry. 
Next chart number 21, here's another daily chart. This shows you a potential ending count here, wave C or wave five. Again, we're still holding that 50 day moving average. Again, you notice it's on the bulls here. Inter notice the moving average ribbon, that's always a good guide whenever it pinches. It's been in a bullish stacking since basically the beginning of November. It's pinching right now. That's important because energy is, if we're gonna get another sh moon shot to the upside, this is the area where you'd see this thrust up. Or if it breaks down, then maybe we could have a high in place. Next, chart number 22, here's the weekly view. Again, this has been this wave count, this nested one, two, one, two, we've had in place since last summer. We're still viewing this move up off those October lows as a wave, major wave three of five. But once this is complete for sure, then we're looking for this say ABC zigzag wave four correction. I think that'll be a buying opportunity. Again, it could be pretty nice correction, but then I think we get another move up in a wave five, but I'm looking for this pullback at any time. Next, chart 23, here's a two hour view of the queues. Again, really guys, the key thing is this little downtrend line. Price needs to recover that. Otherwise, Steve shows an option here where you know you can have a deeper little wave four pullback and then a move up in a five, sort of like moving diagonal. Next, Trevor 24, here's a half day chart. Shows this coil here. Trevor 20, 25, here's a 30 minute chart or two, another two hour chart. Shows you some supports here. And chart 26, here's the Q's 30 minute chart. You can see late last week, the ABC move up into the resistance. Again, we have a series of lower highs in place here. The bulls need to get back over this area. They're gonna attack a new high. Chart 27, here's the Russell 2000 IWM down 2.8% last week. Really nice rally off those uh, 2023 lows in October off that big support area it was just textbook so far price is stalling a little bit at this supply zone next driver 28 here's a daily view of IWM and this is what I stated to me the small caps look more complete even if the S&P or NASDAQ goes on to make another high I could see this possibly forming a lower high this wedge pattern looks pretty complete to me you got a pretty obvious macd divergence you have five waves a b c d e so that labeling to me at least looks correct for now even if the market were to rally to another high it's possible we could see small caps just form a lower high in that wedge we'll see we're either going to do that or we're going to break down but this to me looks more precarious out of the other indexes and finally driver 29 here's a 30 minute chart so I talked about the IWM all last week, and actually you had a great area to take an objective short right here at that 61.8 Fib retracement. That's always a very low risk area to try a short because your stop can be very tight. A lot of times the market really responds to that 61.8 Fib Nachi level. Okay? Now we'll see if this ends up breaking down. Here's the next demand zone down here. So that does it on the major indexes, guys. Right now, Futures are open as I'm recording this. It looks like ES futures are up about five points. So we'll see how they fare tonight. Next, looking at some of the key indicators, here's the VIX. So the VIX had a big power move last Thursday, closed outside its upper Bollinger Bands. And on Friday, it was below the lower Bollinger Bands, which would have been a VIX, VIX Bollinger Band buy signal, but it managed to close a few pennies above it. So it did not trigger a um, VIX Bollinger Band buy signal got very close. Next, um, if you ever wanted to know the statistics to the VIX Bollinger Band system, again, this is the unoptimized version. So we're just using the uh, Bollinger Band 2 and 20 setting. When you close outside the, upper, the Bollinger Bands and back inside, that gives your long and short triggers. And you can see the trades here. Again, we have this coded in TradeStation. So here's the trade statistics. You got about a three profit factor. You have 241 trades, 77% winning trades. Um, and again, I'm showing the way I have my system here coded, I, it, it's able to take two to three entries. So, you know, this total number, if you're only doing one entry, would be less. But you can see 
roughly what the VIX Bollinger Band system stats are. Again, pretty good. The only thing is there's a couple of times in the past when the drawdown was pretty big when it triggered uh, 2011 was one point and 2020 during March it triggered and it had a 20% drawdown. So that could be hard to stomach, but otherwise pretty reliable system. Next, February 32, here's a weekly chart of the VIX just showing you that it's building, it's been building this base here. So when the market, you know, if it does have a correction soon, this could be fuel for that. And chart number 33, here's the, this is the S&P 500 versus the SVXY, that's the inverse VIX ETF. Again, the two move together. But notice late last week, the, um, SVXY started selling off before the S&P. So a little divergence showing up there. Something to watch coming into this week. Cover 34, here's the S&P 500. This is the stocks in the S&P 500. They're above their 50-day moving average. And here's the S&P comparison. Only thing I'm pointing out here is you have an obvious negative divergence here on the percentage of stocks above the, their 50-day moving average in the S&P relative to the index. And finally, Cover 35, here's that NYSI 9EMA crossover system. As you know, I've been watching for this to cross. I said crossing, I thought would be a good, you know, objective short signal. And this did cross last week. Then you got a confirming move there on Thursday. Then we recovered on Friday. Again, if you took this trade, you know, you just have to decide if you're going to stick to it. You got to have a stop in place, probably around maybe Thursday's high, something like that, if you needed a stop. Again, I don't know the, the statistics to this system. I've never taken the time to compile this, the trades in a spreadsheet. So it's not like a system, you know, our mean reversion systems and the VIX system where we have actual stats for. But, you know, just visually, it's been pretty good. You obviously have a pretty good divergence here that's set up. All right, moving on to the bond market. Number 36, here's high yield corporate bonds. Market tends to follow that. This has been leaking oil a bit, but it's still holding some major supports for now. Chapter 37, here's the 10-year treasury yield. It's been up, moving up in this channel. I'm kind of viewing this move up as a wave C. Chapter 38, here's TLT 20-year bonds. Again, bonds move opposite to rates, so it's the same pattern, just inverted. So you have a downtrend channel instead of an uptrend channel like on the rates. Chapter 39, here's the U.S. dollar. Again, U.S. dollar last week stalled at the little supply zone. We have the core PPI and CPI data this week. That's likely to affect, to affect this, that inflation data, as well as the 10-year Treasury yield. So make sure to watch those. And as far as the market sectors here, just going to take a look at a few of them. Here's XLK technology. Again, big sell-off on Thursday, slight gain, regain of the 50-day moving average on Friday. So again, it's still below you know, the broken trend line there. So we'll see if this can recover or not. Charbor 42 semiconductors, you want to keep an eye on this area as well. Honestly, it's really skewed with NVIDIA. Most of the other sectors, are, uh, semiconductors have been selling off, like AMD, stuff like that. Charbor 43, XOC communications, still holding this strong uptrend for now. Remember, that contains a lot of those fang type big cap stocks. Charbor 44, here's XLF financials. Broke this little steep uptrend line, but really the 50, the 20 day moving average here in blue is what I'm watching. Slight bounce on Friday, retesting that broken trend line. Chapter 45, banks. Banks have been moving up. One of my targets was filling this open gap and that was achieved, so I just wanted to show that. Chapter 46, transports, been pulling back here, so I added a little downtrend line to monitor again. We had a couple and handle pattern that we pointed out back in January, which is playing out. You got a little double top perhaps up in here, pulling back. So far holding the 50 day moving average. Next, driver 47, utilities. This is a group to watch maybe, bouncing off a little support area here. Driver 48, industrials. Man, this area has been super strong. Look at this bull market here. Look at the all time highs. This made all time highs back in December of last year. It continues powering up. I will say the moving average ribbon is getting a bit wide here now, getting a little stretched. Again, this is why these moving average ribbons are useful. You can see when they pinch here, that little 
He was in a bullish stacking and it pulled back and pinched that first good squeeze there in October, November last year. That was a good area to go long. Now it's getting wide, so maybe nearing some mean reversion action. Chapter 49, here's XLI Industrials are on the daily. So we got a little horizontal rectangle up here. Let's see if this can pop up one more time or not. It's right on support. An area that's done really well is the energy stocks, XLE Energy. Look at this move out of this uh, channel break. Very nice move. Congrats, you've been riding these energy stocks. Chapter 51, GDX, gold miner stocks. As you know, precious metals and gold and silver stocks had a nice move since uh, beginning of March. You can see the weekly here broke out last week at the weekly coil. Nice follow through this week. Maybe the next target could be this downtrend line from the 2020 highs. Again, I covered GDX extensively in the previous video. Chapter 52, DBC commodities. Again, commodities have been on fire. DBC of 3.4% for the week, testing the oil. Big breakout in silver, as you know. Silver up 10%, breaking out of this textbook ABCDE coil last week. Remember a couple weeks ago, I said a big move's coming in silver, and that started. Gold's been moving up nicely, as you know. Here's gold. My guess is this is some sort of wave three on this bigger uh, monthly chart. And I think we could see gold maybe at 3000 bucks eventually. Carbon 55, DBA, agriculture. Again, you, you see the point, guys? These commodities have been on fire. And here's Bitcoin. As I stated, Bitcoin's at a coil. Little bounce this weekend. It's still in the coil. This is getting ready to bust either direction. Now, the Bitcoin stocks don't look too great. Here's MSTR. You made it rallied up to $2,000 two weeks ago. We had it as a long pick back here at 530. So we had an excellent pick there. But now this looks precarious. It's well below the 200, uh, the 20 day moving average here. This may go down to its 50 day. You can see the last high had pretty prominent MACD divergence, RSI divergence. Chapter 58. Coinbase, Kathy Woods, breaking a little support here. In fact, you have kind of a little head and shoulder look to it here, honestly. We'll see what this does this week. Looking at some of the individual big cap tech stocks, here's NVIDIA, still holding this area. Um, if it loses this, this could be a quick short, at least to the 50-day moving average. We'll see if it can hold this or recover. NVDD is an inverse ETF. It's a way to play. Short NVIDIA. The other um, mega cap stocks are holding up very well. Here's Meta, still you know breaking out of this fourth wave coil triangle. Chapter 62, Microsoft still in this strong uptrend. Chapter 63, Google still holding this support as well, still been very strong. And Charber 64, AMD. Now, again, some of these semiconductors like this have been moving the coil. Next, following up on some of these uh, trade ideas, here's CLS, one of the recent long ideas. Nice breakout last week. Charber 66, ESPR, another one from early last week that broke out. Charber 67, FMC was a, a trade that broke out for a short, breaking that coil to the downside. So now it's 50-day moving average, that's the target. Take some profits. Chapter 68, PANW, another short that's played out nicely here. Looks like I got a second NVIDIA chart here. Let's move on. Chapter 70, AFRM. Here's one to watch as a potential short. Target would be down at the 200-day moving average. And again, guys, with the market kind of where it's at, we got to keep an eye on these inverse ETFs. SPXU, that's the triple inverse ETF for the... S&P, it finally broke this channel last week, pulled back on Friday, but it's still holding that channel. So if you bought this, just put a stop in place, maybe at Thursday's lows or something. Chapter 72, SQQQ, that's the inverse ETF for the Q, same deal. All right, guys, let's, we'll see what happens. Again, futures are up just slightly. ES futures are up five points. And gold, oh, gold's down 16 points. Like I said, gold got quite extended, so not surprised to see that. All right, we'll see what happens here this week. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday evening. Take care.